<laughs> All right, welcome to my next share a sip. We're with Angela. She's a realtor out in the Tri Valley area. So first, cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Yes, thanks for <laughs> having me too. <laughs> um, we are sipping on Bonnie and Dunes Vineyard. Um, it's a white wine, 2019. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so let's get to know Angela while we're sipping on this wine and then we'll review it at the end. Okay, so how long have you been a realtor? I have been a realtor, a realtor for about four years now. Okay, and then like what made you decide you wanted to go? Well, actually, so I used to be a massage therapist to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I was doing that for quite a while. Um, my dad and my parents actually have a lot of investment properties so they wanted someone kind of on the inside to help them out with that so okay. he kind of suggested I go that way and just living in the Bay Area I was kind of looking for another job with a little bit more maybe money kind of yeah. coming in so so I ended up doing real estate and I just absolutely fell in love with it after the first year so awesome mm -hmm. and then how long did it take you to become a realtor so since I was working another job it actually took about a year to pretty much get done with schooling okay. but yeah because there's like a couple tests then you take a big test yeah right? yeah there's okay. a big test and then a big one at the end okay awesome did you like mentor anyone um since yeah. I've gotten my license uh, or like why you were like in school or something um, I had a mentor once I got into my brokerage at Keller Williams uh, mm -hmm. I did have a mentor there for a while okay um and yeah, but so far I haven't mentored myself. I have a couple friends who are starting to get into it, so I'm kind okay. of just like helping them. Yeah, see what really happens when you are a realtor. So yeah. awesome! Can you tell us a little bit about yeah. that life? <laughs> so it's. I mean, honestly, the reason I love it is just because I don't. It's really like not that much work, honestly. I feel okay. like. like the most work you put in is just finding new clients, mm -hmm. and really, what clients fall in love with is just like. Not fall in love with, but what clients really want, I feel like, is just somebody that they could trust, somebody that they like enjoy going to see the houses with, and somebody yeah. that they could trust to sell their house as well. So it's more like a person. I don't know how to explain it. More like a. I get it because <laughs> I, this is why I love like share sips. I love like meeting yeah. people, and also it's kind of fun making feel people feel comfortable, like you know, filming. A lot of people don't like to film before they do this, oh, yeah. but they say yes to me, so mm -hmm. it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's how you drink wine. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it helps. It mm -hmm. gets your confidence up. Yeah. So what? How? Actually, this is a good. Um, like, what was it feeling when you like sold your first house? Ooh. Well, I was terrified the first time I was putting an offer in because it was like with someone I had no idea. It was a Zillow lead. Yeah. Um, and so that was really scary. But then when I finally closed, it was just honestly like a big sigh of relief. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could do this. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready to do it again. And then you just pump for the next one. That's awesome. Do you like um, being the person that sells the house or gives, I don't know, like gives the buyer? You know, oh yeah. Buyers. So there's a listing agent, which okay. is when you're selling the house. And okay. there's a, a buyer's agent when you're working with the buyer. All right. Um, a listing agent, I absolutely love doing that because you get to stage the home, set everything up, kind mm -hmm. of tell the sellers how to um, market it pretty much okay. the best so that you can get a lot of offers. And mm -hmm. then with the buyers, it's fun. It's just a little bit more time because you have to physically go out to all these different houses. So, yeah. but both I do love. So. Okay. Cool. I, that'd be fun staging and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's Bay Area. So what is like, I think I asked this, like the average like down payment you should expect okay so yeah if you are this area. if you're a buyer um, so there's not really a number it's just a percentage mm -hmm. you can go as low as 3.5% uh, okay. if you have a conventional loan which is a, a normal kind of a loan okay. that a lot of people get um, but usually people will try and get about 20% down so okay. that they don't have to pay private mortgage insurance mm -hmm. however a lot of people are nervous about that but private mortgage insurance is really not that much so okay. sometimes it's better to put only like 5% maybe even 10% Okay. You should still be able to get the house. Oh, awesome. And, mm -hmm. you know, people don't, like, not choose you. No, unless, I mean, in today's market, honestly, yeah. I mean, price kind of beats everything else. Mm -hmm. And then right now the market is just going insane. So a lot of people will remove contingencies. And when they do that, a seller might actually want somebody maybe with a little bit more of a down payment yeah. just because if the appraisal doesn't go through. I know this is, like, a lot of talk that maybe won't make sense to some people, but... Um, sometimes a higher down payment does help you okay. get the offer accepted if you're at the same purchase price as somebody else. Do you do like a lot of first-time buyers? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, what are your like advice to those people? So my advice to first time buyers is one, don't wait until you have 20% for a down payment because mm -hmm. a lot of people will try and do that and it's really not as important as you think it is. Okay. And then two, just to know that it's really not that scary. It's yeah. actually really fun once you start looking at the houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I feel like most of my audience is like probably first time buyers or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, oh, okay. So, what is the impact with coronavirus? Because, yeah, the market is crazy. Mm -hmm. But what, what are you seeing? So, I, at least in the Bay Area, have seen nothing but an increase in like everything. I know that a lot of people did unfortunately lose their jobs, um, mm -hmm. but it kind of in this specific area that didn't happen to most of the people that were already kind of looking for a house yeah so it didn't affect us as much and then the reason that it's so hot right now is because so many people in the bay area work in tech yeah and so now they used to have to go into the office they don't really anymore and mm -hmm. so now a lot of jobs are actually going to extend that to where they don't have to go into the office every day so so many people are selling and moving out here where they could afford a little bit more instead yeah. of living in san francisco Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of people are like, oh, people are just moving out of California. But I talked to like someone else in the real estate business, and that's not necessarily true. As in, it's it's a good time to sell, but mm -hmm. there's not a lot of places to get yeah. into. Um. Yeah. At least over here, okay. there are. I have put in offers with buyers, and the seller got over twenty offers submitted, and it has just been absolutely insane. Like, yeah. How many buyers there are, and how. Um, we have a lot of inventory, we just don't have enough right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are still moving within the Bay Area. They're just kind of moving yeah. out of the more expensive, okay. like smaller parts like San Francisco. Like, like yeah, and have a house mm -hmm. in the backyard. Oh, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. What <laughs> it is, it's like a seller's market right now, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I feel like realtors always say that, but like right now, it's actually like a huge, huge. seller's market. Yeah, because you've been four years. So it's like, I mean, coronavirus is just a year. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, what was the biggest impact that you, like, did it happen, like, you know how it started last year in March, yeah. like, when did you see that impact of coronavirus? Um, so, I really saw, the main thing I saw an impact on, like, for my job personally, was, like, we didn't have any more open houses, so mm -hmm. that oh, was yeah. one thing, so it was really hard to then, um, not really hard, but it, it definitely took away a big lead generating source, okay. um, so it's kind of now a little bit different to meet buyers and sellers even mm -hmm. um and then for clients i mean i saw there really wasn't a huge impact even last year we had a great sales throughout yeah. the whole entire year okay. and then it's just nuts that right now we're still pretty much it's like winter right <laughs> it's still winter right yeah it's so it's like, it's like beautiful out here right? i don't know when it's winter <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's still winter and normally Summer, right now yeah. it wouldn't be so busy but it, it is so okay yeah yeah that's i you know i that's just crazy how you know just little things yeah that's cool though it must make your job fun mm -hmm. and then because everything because you can now go into houses because in the beginning could you yeah or is it like virtual so in the very beginning it was virtual okay um and then after just like a month i believe maybe two months yeah, they yeah. came out with a new form for okay. a property entrance form okay so now you just have to sign it your clients have to sign it but it can only be the two of you at a time or okay. two clients at a time and then the realtor okay um you can't really bring your kids anymore okay. and uh yeah it's just kind of a little bit more paperwork but and a, like i guess you always do kind of appointments yeah, we used to, but now even if a property is vacant, like we used to not have to do appointments and you could just go, go up in. and yeah, go see the house. But now you always have to submit the form uh, okay. before you enter the property just to say that you don't have Corona, you don't have any signs, you haven't been in contact with anybody, yeah. kind of all that. So okay. yeah, just to protect everybody. Okay, yeah. nice. And then do you do rent pro uh, rental property? Um, Not really. Uh, I've had some renters that I've helped out with before, just kind of maybe finding some off-market rentals, but... Because okay. um, you don't make money off of that. Not really. Like yeah. You can make a little bit, but it's kind of a lot more work than... Yeah, yeah I don't I know. See. And I, it, really we pay. really can't do that much for the buyers the, other than just like, they they could see all the same houses as we can pretty much, so... Okay, yeah, cool. What's your favorite part about the job? Um, I think what my favorite is viewing all the really nice houses. You know, so, one day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> Although your house is nice. Oh, thank you. That will be your backyard. Oh, thanks. And, yeah. <laughs> but this took so much work. Like, I can't wait to move into a house that's just, like, perfect and has a pool and has all this yeah. nice stuff that I see when I show my clients. So, yeah. That's my favorite part. When I'm driving now, I'm like, oh, 
well, this is a neighborhood I would want to live in. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <my> goodness. <laughs> um, how, like, I don't know, what's the hardest, I guess, part? Um, definitely. Or stressful, I guess. So the most stressful part is, I think, once you're, hmm, I don't know, there's a few things. I would say the most challenging part is definitely hmm. getting more clients. Okay. Because that's always kind of the hardest part. You don't want to sound super, like, salesman-like and just constantly yeah. be like, hey, do you want to buy a house? Do you want to yeah. buy a house? Like, you have to find out different ways to do it. And then the most stressful part is when things pop up maybe in contract like I just had something happen with my last escrow I just closed on Friday okay and our appraisal we had no contingencies we removed all of them mm -hmm. and our appraisal came back 50,000 under which means that my clients have to gap that $50,000 okay like uh, gap I guess yeah. <laughs> and so um and so that was the most stressful part I mean they were prepared and they had money for it but in the end, I just had to like talk to the appraisal and thank goodness I was able to talk them up about like 30000 so there's okay. only a $20,000 gap. But okay. there's like little surprises that just... Because it happens happen. like, well especially in this market because aren't houses going like two days after... Oh, houses in Danville, so I specialize uh, a lot in Danville, Santa Ramona, and Castro Valley and okay. houses on average are pending within four to six days. <laughs> with like like a hundred thousand over it price. oh yeah, yeah. It, well it depends on what you price your house on but yeah all of them are going over and they're mm -hmm. setting like record prices right now with with sales prices it is nuts <laughs> that is crazy mm -hmm. yeah no it's kind of interesting because you know i with my parents so mm -hmm. like knowing more things about buying a house oh yeah because i don't think i think it's always so new mm -hmm. and yeah just being able to talk about it yeah. yeah and it's always new until like you do your first transaction and then the next time you're like oh yeah that wasn't that hard yeah. and then it just all yeah. makes sense once you go through it once yeah and then she's on instagram and she talks mm -hmm. she does great stories and oh, you do trivia nights too oh yeah, yeah. i do <laughs> so yeah on wednesday trivia night uh, every week and I only do about five or six questions and so and I would love to have more I've gotten a lot of compliments I've done a couple of wine questions oh I love so, you <laughs> I know I'll need to ask you about that um, but yeah just to kind of like help I feel like that's one of the best ways to learn is like if you have a few multiple choice answers you're probably more likely to remember it and you're the one trying to like guess what it is exactly so, yeah I think that's fun it gets people engaging like mm -hmm. gets to know you and stuff like that and it is you do need to trust your realtor oh yeah oh, I'm glad <laughs> and then plus it's also easy to be like oh yeah I know this girl it's because you like even if you've never met her, you're like, you know, on Instagram, you're yeah. connecting. It's a lot easier. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm hoping to go for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I get like a Well, lot social of my media clients, is like so huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's such a big deal. Oh, I wish, like, I can't wait until that is pretty much the sole way that like realtors get their business. Because mm -hmm. right now it's still like cold calling. And yeah, because I think the younger generation is now coming up oh, on yeah. like, you know, uh, whereas a lot of older generations, so they're still old school. And then mm -hmm. younger generations are buying houses, so where do we go? We go to Instagram. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> For real, like, that's what we do. It's not, like, mm -hmm. and we want to see, like, personality, like, at least I do. Oh, I want to yeah. see a personality. If I had to hang out with you a couple times, like, yeah. rather make it fun, too. Exactly. I'll bring the line. <laughs> exactly. You know, you're, you're buying a big purchase, so it's just, yeah, that's oh, cool. Um, so... You know, you've been four years. Do you still get the same feeling like when you close a house? Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, it's just like, I don't know, thrilling at the end. I think also because I'm not like huge, huge, like those mega yeah. team leaders or anything like that. So I'm usually only closing about like seven to eight a year. Okay. And so it's just, I mean, and that's just what I've done in the past. So I'm hoping it'll get more and more. Yeah. But it's still, there's not that many. So every time you close it, it's like, oh my gosh, that was so exciting. Yeah. Like, now I'm ready for another one. And so, yeah, it's yeah. still just as exciting when I That's close That's awesome. Especially because I always come up with like a, I like coming up with like closing gifts for my clients. Yeah, I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. what, what's your typical closing gift? So I usually will, if it's like a couple, I'll message the spouse of the other or mm -hmm. girlfriend, boyfriend, um, and kind of ask what the other one likes. Okay. And then I'll also kind of like look at the family and see if they have a dog. I'll get some cute little dog stuff. Oh, cute. Like, yeah, one of my clients had a really nice pool that they had got with their house. Um, so I knew that they like to have parties. So I got them like a little raft thing with like a beer pong table. Oh, that's so, so awesome. Yeah, they were like our age. So I was like, oh, okay, I think they'll like this. And they loved it. So. That's, that's fun. Mm -hmm. I love giving gifts. 
I know. It's so fun, especially because they're already excited because they're moving into the new house. Everything yeah. went smooth, and then they get like a gift at the end. It's just like a party. Like yeah, it. and they have just as thrill as like they got a house, you sold the house, like mm -hmm. it's a party. Oh, everyone's excited. I love it. Yeah. Do you have like a celebration kind of thing you do? That I do. Um, I usually will. I mean, I guess I'll just usually go out with my boyfriend yeah. to dinner and celebrate. That's and, like, awesome, though. Mm -hmm. I'm glad because I was like, some people just. I don't know. I like celebrating everything in life. Me Life's too, too short. It is. <laughs> I, I swear, my family, this is like very random and off topic, but my family has a tradition where we have a, a bean day. Okay. And it sounds really weird. My grandma's from New Mexico. Okay. So they used to have a, a rodeo out there called Refried, or I think it was Bean Day. So now okay. we have Refried Bean Day. So I love it. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. Any reason for a party. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Another day was soap and wine. Yeah, exactly. Kidding. No, but I like to highlight, uh, you know, just make it special. Yeah. Yeah, more for other people, but I'll do it for myself too. Yeah, well, this is great. I like uh, Yeah. This is I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I like meeting new people. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, anything you want to mention or or like that we didn't touch base on mm. or you have anything coming up or um i do um i mean i have a few things kind of coming up right now but i think the one thing i would mention to all of the buyers like especially newer buyers just in case they are nervous in today's market mm -hmm. is like don't worry about all the competition right now because mm -hmm. i mean i have clients right now that are looking um only in like the 625,000 like max range. Okay. And we've still been able to find- There's houses? Oh yeah, that's all <laughs> I know. I would think the same. I have like a few actually clients that are looking and we could have had a house last week, but then they kind of changed their mind last minute, which is fine. They didn't like a certain area or something. Um, but I mean, it's still, you just kind of have to talk to your realtor and figure out now which areas will work. And okay. usually I would just suggest to search for houses at least in today's market that are at least like 50,000 below what your max is. Okay. That way you have room to be the top buyer. Bitter, yeah, yeah, exactly. Or bitter, so. yeah. That's yeah. cool. Good, good tips. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all need them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need the inside tips. At least in, yeah, in this market, yes. It's... Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, let's talk about the wine now. Mm, okay. Okay. So we don't have to get too technical. Just kind of how you like it. Mm -hmm. just zoom up I know, I like I'm already almost done with mine. <laughs> but that's good. <laughs> it's like, it's, I don't, I think it's March now, but it is, yeah, I feel March. like it's 80 degrees, uh -huh. like, but perfect. I could feel it's it. It's kind of hot yeah. now, <laughs> like sitting out here, <laughs> but it was perfect for white wine. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. So how do you like it? I love this one actually. And I think I will probably end up having to buy it. Yeah. Where, where do the, you get this one from? So, uh, I think they sell these at Bedmo and like okay. Total Wines. I should totally look before I do these things. <laughs> but I, I, I know that I'll send you the website. Okay, I, okay. I know they ship to California for sure because okay. I've gotten it. Um, but yeah, they have the they have a couple brands. Um, I've done a share sip with the guys and they're pretty cool. Oh nice. So it's nice knowing who's behind it too. Mm -hmm. That's kind of fun. Um, I think on coronavirus like quarantine they did a virtual tasting oh nice yeah it was pretty fun that'd be so cool were you part of it yeah they did their other brand as well but they touched on this too oh, nice. uh, it's like stay weird and like oh. it's the aliens i like <laughs> it's, it it's i didn't notice that yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I brought it yeah um cool and i it they're all for affordable like none of their wines is expensive which oh, is pretty geez. awesome yeah i usually try and stay at like the middle to bottom right? yeah <laughs> unless i'm celebrating yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah i can't afford too yeah. much <laughs> especially when you like wine it's I, when it goes by fast <laughs> Yeah, so what like one to ten, what would you rate this? I would actually because I do love this one's a Sauvignon Blanc, you said? No, I don't. It's a uh, it's like a pick pole. I don't think I remember that. Ooh, it it's could. literally lip stinger is a beloved grape from southern France. I feel like it tastes really I feel like it tastes kinda like a Pinot Grigio. It does. I'm more than a Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Not as like crisp as a Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. But like more subtle. I like it though because I feel like it's a little fruitier. So that's what I like the most. Yeah. So I would actually rate it a ten out of ten because I, I really, really like it. Yeah. It's very similar to a Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. I haven't had one of this in a while. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, you like cabs in Little Lisa? Yeah. Oh, nice. I do like white wine, especially days like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like barbecues. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, what's your Instagram? Is Angela mm. Marie? 
So yeah, I'm trying to remember now. I think it's Angela. I'm gonna link this all, but okay, good. Yeah, like da I underscore re realtor. I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. I should know. I know everyone's Instagram well, handles versus their name. I should know my own. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. That's what I thought. I was yeah, to but she's it. awesome. She's fun. She keeps everything light and understanding because yeah. I'm a person that doesn't know anything about that realm. So, but I have fun following you. You had a good question. So. <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> so, make sure you follow along. And if you're looking in the Tri-Valley, hit her up. Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you.